Tesla is an amazing company and Elon Musk has succeeded in creating one of the most exciting businesses in existence. In this video, we'll look at Tesla's finances and see just how great it really is. After that, we'll score the company from 0 to 100 based on financial metrics such as revenue growth, debt and return on equity. You'll have a near perfect view of Tesla's finances. Prepare for some pretty good numbers. Finally, we'll do a price prediction using a discounted cash flow model. Now, this is part 2 of the series, so don't forget to look at the first video after this one, where we describe Tesla's insane business and both the genius and problem with Elon Musk. So let's continue where we left off in the last video and look at Tesla's finances. So the first series of graphs we're going to look at are things relating to the income statement. So there's sales. This is Tesla's revenue, and just look at that growth. The last three years, it has been 43% Kager, reaching over 21 billion US dollars this quarter and quadrupling since 2018. It looks like nothing has been able to stop the growth, not even the pandemic. On the contrary, since then, we have seen the wildest growth. This is a revenue breakdown. Worth noticing is Tesla's reliance on the US market, representing 45% of the revenue, but also notice their sales in China. Of that revenue, the vast majority is related to their EV segment. Automotive revenues are almost 88% of it all. The energy generation segment is puny in comparison. Now look at part 1 of this two-part series for more about Tesla's business. Next, this is an earnings waterfall showing how much of Tesla's revenue is left after cost of revenue, operating expenses and other expenses. So of the total 75 billion US dollars in 2022, about 11 billion is left for net income, that is earnings. This year, the first of real profit, it has increased over 200%. 200! Here is a detailed graph of their net income, showing this amazing growth. But more interesting is the future of Tesla. This is a revenue and earnings forecast, made by bringing together several dozen analyst expectations. According to them, revenue will double from 75 billion today to 143 billion in 2025, so just two years from now. Meanwhile, earnings are also assumed to increase by a factor of 2x to 24 billions. Let's continue the analysis with the balance sheet, so what they own themselves and what they owe others. We can see that both their long-term and short-term liabilities are well covered by their assets. Amazingly, Tesla's short-term assets, so current assets, are more than both their long-term and short-term liabilities together. Cash and short-term investments are actually five times larger than their debt. Here we can see a nice breakdown of their overall assets. About half of it is plants, property and equipment, showing how capital-intensive manufacturing cars is, especially for Tesla that have 80% of production under their own roof compared to 20% for other automakers. Here is the same breakdown for liabilities. 40% of it is account payables, so money Tesla owes to others for services or goods they have received, most likely their suppliers. Last graph for the balance sheet is debt to equity history, and I like what I see here. For a majority of Tesla's lifetime, they've had more debt than equity and cash, but since 2020, debt has been decreasing and everything else increasing. Right now, their net debt is negative, which means they have more cash than debt. This is excellent, just excellent. Last section is Tesla's cash flow statement. This measures how much money goes in and out from the company. We'll just look at free cash flow here. It's the same pattern. Since 2019 and 2020, free cash flow has turned massively positive. It has had a compounded annual growth rate of 50% these last three years. And these numbers are what we are going to use for the valuation model later in the video. But before we do that, we're going to answer how good really is Tesla's financials. And we'll score the business from 0 to 100. Green is good, red is bad. Now remember, don't trust this model too much since the results are automatic with no regard to the industry of the company analyzed. It's neither perfect nor accurate. Just a rough tool I use together with some common sense. The first four metrics are related to sales. Total score for this category is 88 out of 100. This is a great number and when it comes to actually selling stuff and getting profits and revenue, Tesla is amazing. Revenue has a compounded annual growth rate of 45% and EPS is a mind whopping 300%. This has been driven by increasing margins, which we see in a net margin growth of 139%. 
As I stated previously, when we look at revenue forecasts, this is expected to continue. Next metrics are measuring efficiency of the business. Tesla scores high here, with a total score of 80 out of 100. A return on capital of 26% and a return on equity of 32% is just insane and close to as perfect as it can get. A number that high on, for example, return on equity means Tesla is turning shareholder equity, so the money we have invested into the company, into profit at a rate of 32%. The higher the return on equity, the more efficient a company's management is at generating income and growth from its equity financing. So Tesla has been very, very efficient. Third box of metrics is relating to the debt situation. Here they get a score of 93, so pretty close to a perfect 100. Not much to add here actually, everything is green. They have no problems covering their debts. The debt to equity ratio is a low 0.14. The only one standing out here is the quick ratio, which measures Tesla's ability to meet its short term obligation with its most liquid assets, cash for example. But it's still good enough. The next three metrics are payback. So if the company pays anything back to shareholders, either in dividend or by share buyback. This is the one category that is not good. They pay zero in dividends and therefore have no dividend kager. At the same time, they have issued shares at an annual rate of 5%, diluting shareholders. This is, however, quite common for growing companies such as Tesla, so I'm not worried about this one. The final score for Tesla is 68 points out of 100. This is pretty high, and if it wasn't for payback, it could be over 80, which is close to the highest I have ever given any company. Another mitigating factor is the positive and negatives, which I score at 65 points. This is the only metric that is not automated, and it's based on my personal view on Tesla. If you want to know more about these positives and negatives, watch my first video on this series on Tesla. There I go through them in detail. Now, finally, we'll take these numbers and calculate Tesla's intrinsic value, the share price. If you appreciate the time and effort I put into researching and making these videos, I would love a gentle nudge on that subscribe button. Even better, comment your opinion of Tesla down below. Do you agree with me? Let's discuss. So it's time for the final part, valuation. I'm going to be honest, it's really hard to give a reliable valuation on Tesla. So take these numbers with a grain of salt. Especially the terminal multiple and future margin is sort of a coin toss based on if you see Tesla as primarily a car manufacturer or a tech company. So first, we need to understand the inputs. Up here, we can see the data we use to base our analysis on. Here, we have the inputs and assumptions. And at the bottom, some metrics based on the results of those assumptions. Notice I use three different scenarios. The worst case, the normal case, and the best case scenario. So let's start with the worst case scenario, which I put at a probability of 25%. Starting revenue is slightly lower than today. That revenue, I assume, will grow by about 15% for the first five years, so into 2027. After that, Tesla will grow at about 8% for the next five years. Now, they used to grow at around 45%, but these assumptions assume a recession hitting Tesla pretty hard, really stifling their growth. This is in my opinion reasonable, considering the recession-sensitive business they operate in. More on that in my first video. Free cash flow margins I put at 8%, which then falls to 6%, due to competition and increased capex. The multiple I put at 16 times free cash flow. We'll talk more about the multiples soon. In the normal case scenario, which is the most likely one, about 50% probability, I use a revenue growth of 20% the first 5 years, which then decreases to 12%. I once again assume some kind of recession, which halves Tesla's growth. Also included here is that Tesla will simply sell less cars, as more EVs from other companies are released. For a company of Tesla's size, 20% growth is still amazing. The free cash flow margin I put at 10%, which then falls to 8%. I use 20 for the terminal multiple. And then, for the best case scenario, the one many hope for, I use a slightly higher revenue starting figure and a growth of 30% for the first 5 years. This then falls to a growth of 15% after 2027. I know some believe that Tesla will grow at like 30 or 40% forever, but I simply don't think this is realistic. Then their Tesla bot and other ventures need to work out, which I assume they won't. But if I'm wrong, please comment down below and let's discuss. I'm open to my assumption being too conservative or maybe even totally wrong. So for the terminal multiple I use 24. 
Before moving on to the final results, a quick comment on those multiples of 16, 20, and 24. They are lower than the one today, but you have to realize this is 10 years in the future. Tesla can't be valued as a tech startup forever. The multiple will go down significantly. But I actually still give Tesla a higher exit multiple than the legacy car manufacturers because of their innovative tech nature and because of being the market leader. Most car manufacturers have a multiple of like 8 to 14. So 16 at my lowest assumption for Tesla is still higher than Toyota's highest. So finally, here we are, the results. I get an average intrinsic share price of 102 US dollars. The spectrum of the results for each of the scenarios goes from a low 39 to a high 202 dollars. This wide spectrum shows the uncertainty of giving Tesla a valuation. Here are the actual discounted cash flow numbers, by the way, if you want to check them out. So revenue by 2031's end will be between 200 billion to 600 billion. That is a lot. So all these numbers give us a probability adjusted average margin of safety of minus 10%. So Tesla should actually fall a little bit more for it to be fairly valued. You can see the spectrum here. IRR, or the internal rate of return, is the amount the share price should increase every year for these 10 years predicted. Average number is 8%, which is pretty much in line with what the stock market usually returns. Together with the PE of 35, the peg ratio of 2.55, a price per sale of 4.8, and a price per book value of 8.5, which is pretty high, my conclusion is that Tesla is an overvalued stock. But I wouldn't say crazily overvalued, considering their insane growth. Simply Wall Street values Tesla shares at 159 US dollars, so much higher than me. Meanwhile, TipRank, which uses 31 analyst forecasts, value it at 272 US dollars. So I'm closer to the analyst's lowest expectations. Then we have Alpha Spread, which uses Wall Street analyst forecasts. They value Tesla between $24 to $457, with an average price of $258. Once again, much, much higher than me. Now, what do you think? Is Tesla a buy? Comment down below. And once again, subscribe if you want more content. Don't hesitate to visit my channel and check out my other videos.